have Rise, Ezreal, the Tears coming through, and a Maokai, who's the best of the three in terms of just soaking damage in the late game. You can see what will happen, but I want to see Samsung kind of snap to attention, improve the early game. They can't win this tournament if they just keep playing that sloppily, in my estimation. So the question for me, we saw Golden Blue struggling while well, he did have some excellent use of the Miasma, one or two solid ultimates. Yeah. What champion do you put him on? Because it feels to me that Cassio not going to be an option again if you know that he's just going to fall out in I the mean, I think, fights. I think it's for Cassiopeia. I think you just put Piglet on Ezreal, something that's a little bit more self-sufficient and get more done overall. Well, they banned the Talia, which leaves Ariana, the other champion that he's played quite well, as a very much a possibility. I think Ariana's the, t the one this time. I uh, don't have a window into his mentality, but when you do lose on a champion like Cassiopeia, and then you know you see those damage numbers leverage, someone in the champs like would have looked at damage numbers. It's always the most common metric to look at. I think Orianna is probably the choice, and Orianna versus Victor, even if it's not in the first rotation, Victor's up, so uh, it's probably going to be a Victor yep. game for Crown. Well, we once again see the Rek'Sai priority coming in for Rain over, no surprises after his performance last game. Uh, the Zyra been taken off the board on blue side by Team Liquid. Uh, do you think just worth taking away from the side of Samsung, despite the fact that they didn't show it in the previous game? I mean, I think it's all about what they were prioritizing first pick, because now you look and you're like, okay, probably going to be Karma coming through on the side of Samsung. It was Karma versus the yep. uh, Zyra as Zyra. the bot lane matchup. So the fact that they banned Zyra and given away Karma is pretty intriguing to me. Crucially, I kept trying to think, what's the band that got left up in its Twitch? I think if Samsung don't take away Twitch, and if you're, I don't know if really plays champion very no, well. No, he's not going to take it. So. I think Liquid needs to all in on Piglet playing Twitch, and getting through the laning phase, and going hard. It's part of the reason I think they banned Zyra to make sure of, of the biggest lane bully and Zyra is not available. Yeah, sure, Karma is there, but yeah, Oriana mid's good for that. You know, Rek'Sai can have some level feel. Like, you can play Tom Kench or Thresh if you really want. Just, I think you put your eggs and the Piglet's going to carry on Twitch basket. I mean, could also be that other basket they love to go to, Freak. Vayne also the Vayne basket. is uh, potentially going to be a late rotation. Now, I, I want to double check here because Vayne, I know, obviously has a, a pretty poor laning phase in terms of she's always going to get pushed in. But is it the same case for Twitch? Because I feel like so much of the early to mid-game It's not Vayne, right, Freak? It's it, not quite Vayne. It's level. actually pretty solid. I mean, Twitch in 623, I think unequivocally is the best AD carry in the patch. Strong and words. his laning phase was already not bad. Like the nerfs in 624, nerf his laning phase especially. And okay, now he can probably get bullied in the, in the 624 world on live, but yeah, I mean, the other thought I had was Ezreal. I, I still think Twitch is better. Ezreal's a safer choice, but it will let Piglet do a lot of damage output of the team fights. But how does he do damage output through a Maokai? That's kind of the issue is that Maokai is so damn tanky that sure, he's going to take a lot of free shots, but yep. if we get to three, four items again, Ezreal is certainly not a tank buster. There's two points that help that. One is the Blade of the Rune King buff that was already in 623, and, and Ezreal usually buys that around third. Sure. The other is, as we actually saw from Ruler in the previous game, Ezreal's so safe, you can get Lord Dominic's regard fairly early on in the build and not be unsafe. So it, even though you don't consider Ezreal hyper carry, and statistically actually, like on live, he tends to fall off late game win rate wise. Oh! He's so safe that he can actually put out, he can build greedily and have insanely high uptime in team fights. I think Piglet can get through Kuve in a team fight. Or it's a flex, it's Ezreal win, and it's still Twitch. And it's Turbo Maokai, though, this time. Yeah. Because, uh, that is going to be double speed up. We haven't seen the Sivra Karma bot lane for the longest time now. It could still be flexed to mid, but the double speed like up. like 613. Yeah. The lane yeah, swaps yeah, were still yeah. a thing Six, when we were 610. You know, we were talking about <laughs> ages ago. Just a Sivra comp. Always happy to happy to hear that one coming out. Of course, just so much speed on this lineup. The Maokai was already a powerhouse. We talked about the damage numbers. It's going to be even easier for him to make his way into the back line. Uh, the big question for me, we have the Ezreal. Once again, has to itemize the tier. Notably falls behind, unlike the Jin. How, uh, if Liquid aren't reliably going to be able to win the early game here based on picks, do we think that they can come back in the mid to late game with a champion like Ezreal, who is going to eventually get that Muramana and be a, a big threat? I think it's fine. I mean, Liquid weren't ridding bot lane really anyway. Yes, there was a fight down that the Liquid ended up coming ahead in, but they first blooded the mid lane, right? They just had, you know, the, the camp set for the mid lane fight, and I feel like Orianna can be less safe than Rise based on the circumstance here. So I think the same Rek'Sai Cassiopeia camp on the ground can still happen. I think Piglet can stay equal in CS very easily. And I think he's actually better set up to hard carry teammates later on, do much better than Jin would at killing Maokai. But I actually really like Samsung's draft into what TL is committed to. Cassiopeia against multiple speed ups. And we're talking about so much speed up on yeah, the side of Samsung. Very it's very hard to hit the poison. Sure, someone will take a tick from the Miasma, but otherwise close the distance, take her out, and just overrun the lineup of Team, team Liquid. I totally agree. It puts a ton of weight on specifically Matt, 
and Lorlo. Those are the two that I think must now save the game. Okay, Cass had a hard time. Ezreal's going to be okay for Piglet. But the Poppy kickback on the Maokai, yeah. TP's in, send him right back out of the team fight. If Lorlo ejects Kube, now it's a fight without a top but laner. Like, even if Kube's better, who cares? It's so difficult. Twisted advance, of course, of making course you untargetable. It it, the Orianna ball remains attached to you as you go in. That's why I said if. The question is always if. If he does it, it's awesome. If he can't and Kube outplays it, the two is going to win his team the game. But that is, though, if I had to pick one interaction, it's Poppy Maokai in the team fights. I mean, a ton of pressure on these guys now to pull it out as Samsung. They're going to run at them, and we've already seen their yep. team fighting prowess. They have the power now to line it up, and yep. I'm curious if Liquid can get the same strong early game. I mean, Liquid had some of the intangibles. That Mad Lifestyle Thresh from Matt yesterday was the sort of high-level play that we need from some of these members. So let's see if they continue to step it up, because remember, it's just a best of three here today. If Samsung win this game, they are straight through to semifinals. Of course, this is it, the final shot, but be interesting to see exactly how this one unfolds. Can Team Liquid bring it back and take us to a game three, or will Samsung find the 2-0? We're going to find out in just a moment. We're going to send things over to our caster. Fishy and Pulse standing by. Task, breaking that one down for us and the champions today, but we are now into game with the semi-final set two between Team Liquid and Samsung Galaxy, who are now on match point. Just need this one win and they will be in to the finals. And we'll be finding our second semi-finalist, or rather, second finalist tomorrow with our next semi-final. But we're still here, it's, it's Pulse, I'm Pulse, and I'm with Deficio. I want to start this one off though with uh, I was watching Champion Select and you poked me and said, hey Pulse, this one is going to be Thresh, and you pointed to the other side, and this one's going to be uh, Rice. Mini oh, I think you misheard me. It's uh, the accent. <laughs> I actually meant Oriana. Oh, um, gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, yeah. Same syllables, very similar sounding champions. Very Would you like to, to explain? Other. Because I love me some difference you're talking about champion select. So, well, begin. So, basically, what I've seen Liquid do already is uh, whenever Zyra is not being picked, they can go Thresh against it. Because Zyra is very good against Thresh, specifically in lane. Like, not only can you, like, out trade. Uh, the Thresh super hard. You can also put a plant in front of him when he actually wants to go find any sort of hoops, and it becomes really difficult to play around. So, but him banning Zyra, they're kind of telling Samsung, take calm. Please take it no matter what, because we actually want to play like this specific pick that Matt has been really good on so far, and they want to just get rid of uh, the Thresh specifically and actually want to play it against the Karma lane. So, that one I felt like was pretty obvious. Also, trying to go for like one of the big playmakers for them uh, so far. And the problem is, it's still a fairly rough lane unless Matt can hit some sick hooks. It literally is the thing about Thresh, you know, most of these range supports are kind of free win lanes, and Thresh has to make like Place. Like he has to be able to go aggressive with, with hooks and plays in order to like win the lane specifically. And you don't have any sustain for your AD carry, you don't have proper shielding either because the lantern shield doesn't really count at that effective compared to like a karma shield to save your AD carry. So what you can see now <laughs> is that Matt oh, can try and go aggressive like this, but that's about it. And actually there's a level 3 gank pulse. The table They're baiting it. turn from Rainover, the level 2 from Rukbrula and Core JJ, but they get the first kill. They strike first onto Matt with the first one, but Piglet's being chased down by Ruler. He doesn't take the tower shot. Core JJ gets away from Rainover, and Piglet still kiting away. Rainover jumps over the wall, the flash after Piglet. Warlord Proxen, he's very low himself. Rainover closing in, but so is Golden Blue from the <laughs> mid lane. And run, Ruler. Maybe well, he can, if he can, he actually, can. never mind. Uh, now, hey, Matt's well, here. he wants to die to Matt. He wants to stand in front of Matt and die to Matt. <laughs> That's the best thing for Ruler. There you go. Obviously, Liquid knew that he was otherwise going to wait for an execute, but that would take forever. So Matt has to take the kill. First spot over to Ruler, though, on Sivir. Funny trades in the bottom lane. We talked very quickly about it, like, Playing against Karma is still difficult, uh, especially because level 2 rush is so effective for Sivir. Like, we don't see it that much right now because all the AD is being preferred above her, but she's still so good at pushing for, for level 2 compared to an Ezreal who's like hitting one minion, hitting one minion, hitting one minion. So Samson got early level 2, went all in, and even though they got ganked, they knew they could still try and go for that kill because Liquid Spotlight was obviously trying to bait this. They were trying to bait that fight, so Rainer could come in from behind and take them down. But in the end, Samsung gets the first blood pulse, and now they go mid lane. They do, Ambition. Looking for a kill mid lane, but does not find it this time around. Rain over in the sidelines. And look at our AD carry, seven CS each. 
when everyone else is sitting above 20. <laughs> Apart from the other solo laners, but obviously with the early trading. No surprise, so much focus down on the bot lane though, just like uh, last game, because uh, Piccolin is that big carry of Team Liquid, and Sansa recognizes need to try and focus him down, and likewise Rainover wants to try and get that bot lane rolling. Yeah, but in order for Liquid to win this game, Matt has to go off on Thresh here again. Talked about it just before, in order for Thresh to win lane against these ranged supports, you need to hit, hit the hooks. You have to be like an aggressive playmaker, otherwise you just sit back and you farm, and that's it, and then Karma's gonna out-sustain you because Karma can just shield her AD carry 24-7, and then your AD carry can't win the trades. So it is a difficult lane for Liquid to play, but obviously it's been a comfort pick. They're opting into it. Overall, though, just judging from pure pick and ban, it seems to me Liquid is focusing almost too much on comfort. Looking at Cassiopeia when Orianna was available as well. They could just go Orianna, who's good into Cassiopeia, and kind of block that from Crown. Very clearly, they feel like Golden Blue can carry on, the, on that champion. But it puts Crown in a very good position because now you're running this team fighting comp with Maokai, Orianna, and Sivir Kama to buff the Maokai up yep. as well. Cassie P in a late game fight might deal zero damage because you're only gonna hit the tank, and if you do, you're gonna get shockwave. And we saw the last game, Golden Blue did not deal all that much damage. The flash from Rain over the knock on to Ruler. The hook goes wide, and Ruler will just walk it off. Yeah, and those are the hooks you have to hit to make this pick work and create that early game advantage. I'm not sure if Matt was expecting Ruler to have a small sidestep, or it was just like, sometimes when you have it on Smartcast, you're just a little bit too quick on it, and like, it's just a super annoying little mechanical mistake. But Matt was so good on that thrash yesterday, so I mean, there is cause for picking that pick in the first yeah, place. Yeah, exactly. Again, yeah. It's, it's like, guys, we need to pull something crazy here. We, we need to do something where if we can outplay Samson early, potential. we have the outplay potential, exactly. Can we do the same we did in the last game? Outplay them in scrimmages in the early game, we can get the lead. And that's exactly what Liquid is going for. I don't think they're going to win late game. If you look at the champions, also if you look at the teams. <laughs> I was gonna say, I mean, the big one usually is safe, 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 safe statement with the teams. Yeah, that one is safe one. But <laughs> even with the champions, I yeah. like Samsung's comp more late game. Just adding insult to injury. But why not just go all in on what you think could maybe get you the game? That's what Team Liquid have tried to do here. So, uh, definitely agree with their approach to the take with this one. They just need to try and get the execution down. Uh, it's gonna be coming from Matt, it's gonna be coming from Golden Blue. And Lolo as well, trying to bat away Kuve in these fights. Because otherwise, Kuve's never gonna die ever. So, no. Please get rid of him. And that's one of the things uh, we noticed in the last game. Like, I actually talk about it after because, oh, he baits it! Oh, he misses out the play. Well played by Ambition with the bait there. Rainover's going to follow after with the tunnel. Ambition very low, tagged up by the Prey Seeker, but Core JJ there to defend him. Not 100% sure what Ambition was doing behind enemy lines right there. Obviously, tried to get out as well and realized very quickly he couldn't actually kill Matt. Good bait on uh, his little uh, jump with the Q. Getting the flash, uh, the flay down first. But really, one of the things we just have to look at is like Crown on this Oriana, his rise performance. He was ending a little bit in the start of the game, yep. but then later on, he had a sick flank into a team fight and ended up doing actually quite a lot of damage. And that's kind of Crown as a player. When you feel like he has a bad game, it's like, ah, Crown, not doing too well. And then one fight, like, oh, okay, Crown, he's back. Yeah, it looks great. He's awesome. He's going to win this fight. Top lane fight, though, Pulse. Yep, they're both very low. Lolo's gonna jump into Kuve, but he's pretty low on mana. He's only got time for one more hammer shock, and he will be dodged out of by Kuve. Oh! oh! He was looking for the final sap magic, but it was not enough in the bank. And Lolo beat him. Uh, beat him. He beat him in the top. He lane. did beat him with the hammer. What a great solo kill. Lolo taking down Kuve and also <laughs> Cloud quite Dragon. Great solo kill. Hey, I mean, hey, that was a good solo kill. Even though it's tanked, yeah. it'll still be a good solo kill. Maybe they may solo kill. Maybe they isn't like the sickest skill shots I mean, being landed. The way that tank trades work in the top lane is just like you both decide if you want to commit while you're both 80%, and then you, you play it out like an right. auto battle. And it's like, did I have enough mana? Did I have enough damage? If yes, great, I won the trade. And basically, like if you if you care about the three tanks and the very small differences, yeah. you know, it's like Nautilus is generally looked at as like the strongest early game pick. Maokai is the strongest late game pick, but he's then obviously the weakest in the laning phase. Poppy is like in between, and that's why a lot of people value her the highest, and also because her ulti is like that insane game changer. If you hit a sick ulti late game and knock two guys out of a fight, you can like win the entire game. So Poppy is like the thing in the middle where she's her laning phase is fine, her late game is great. Maokai is weak lane, strong lane, not lost, good early game. 
actually pretty weak late game. Like, he doesn't really uh, get that much extra tankiness. His shield doesn't scale properly or anything. And yeah, he's, he's actually not that hard compared to two other tanks to take down. And I say not that hard. I mean, it's still going <laughs> to take you like 20 seconds. Exactly. But. Exactly, exactly. Ambition into the mid lane here with Crown, while Golden Glue is taking away that blue buff. Might be able to take this one down, actually. The minion wave is rapidly dying. Rain over is there also to assist the tower defense. And that one will survive for a little bit longer. Team Liquid managed to pick up the first dragon of the game as well. That will be the Cloud Dragon. And Picklip, he's continuing to farm up a storm, going for that standard build there with the TF. So it's Gold Glue, gonna be farming in the bottom lane, also attacking in the mid lane. Crown in this 1v2, oh, where are we going? Rain over onto Crown, he'll jump away, but Golden Glue in pursuit. Flawless coming in from the top lane, don't wanna give him an assess. Pube into the fight, lands a ventral maelstrom for the kill. Uh, in the bot lane. Somehow his AD carry died. Ruler and Core JJ coming in there and Kuve battered away from Lolo. It's such a big problem for Team Liquid that this bot lane is struggling. They just lost a 2v2 trade against the Kama Sivir. Mid lane, yes, they traded one for one. Ambition with a nice kick into actually the ulti of Kuve. Good little combo. But the fact that Piglet dies in a 2v2 bot lane makes this game really hard for Liquid to win because they needed that bottom side to do well. Let's see the trade this is the bot lane. into like the spell shield and the shield from Kama. And Rulas has been winning trades so far. And Pickett goes aggressive. Flashes the wall. Flashes the wall. Also, very close to be fair. Very, he, yeah, very close. As he jumped in, he also got exhausted. So it was just, you know, bad timing on that one. And Piglet's heal was only just coming up now. But it looked very good. Matt lands at the hook. Piglet got the ultimate. Uh, yeah, imagine that fight push. where Piglet, as you just said, had heal ready, actually used yep. it before he even uh, they jumped in. They would have won that trade, so just maybe a little bit too quick on the trigger, but sadly now, this mid lane tower, we talked about a favorable matchup for Orianna, especially after Lost Chapter and Level 6, where you can just zone the Cassiopeia pretty effectively. And also with that gank we saw in the mid lane before, Crown has just taken a mid tower at 11 minutes. That's 650 gold. That's more than a double kill in terms of gold that he just picked up. Uh, Crown is doing very well for himself. Also with a 20 CS advantage, he's so far ahead of Golden Glue in this lane. Are now seeing a trade bot lane for JJ. Piglet, nice trade back onto Core JJ. But really, we're just seeing now where where the first game had Samsung winning lanes on farm but losing trades. Liquid built up a gold advantage that way and got like a few towers. This game, Samsung are once again winning the lanes on farm but they're not losing the early skirmishers. They're actually going even, slightly winning on the bottom side. So what you're telling me is everything is going right for Samson. Yes, that is actually exactly what I'm telling you. And they're trying to set up a potential dive bot. There is TP from both top laners. They can both run. Lolo's coming. Ambitious. Next to Q. Here's the TP in from the top lane. The mat just land the death sentence. It's a main TP so for Lolo as he knocks him against the tower or rather the side wall, and that will be the kill onto Ambition, well played by Team Liquid. The classic cast curse. Oh, Samsung's doing well, never mind, one guy just died. The crown might get caught. Being chased after by Golden Glue, lands the Miasma, Blast Cone. Hype! It's a safety. Now Liquid uh, hates the Blast Cone, and Crown loves the new addition of the plants, but yep. one thing that actually is important to highlight is the fact that Team Liquid used their teleport. Kube did not. Kube did not, and yes, of course, Liquid got a kill. They stopped the potential dive, but in fact, trading teleport for a kill is actually always, almost always in favor. Uh, almost. Whoop, whoop. Close, but no cigar. Almost always in favor of the team losing that one member, but keeping TP because now Samsung can set up a dive bot lane, just like they were about to do, and this time, Lolo won't join. And that means Liquid either leaves the bot lane and loses the tower, or they stay, and they end up dying under that tower, most likely. So this can actually, in return, Give Samson a bigger advantage and a bigger lead, despite losing that one kill. Yeah, he's losing a little bit now to try and get a bigger piece of the cake later. That's what they're looking for. And like, the TP play was just fine from Liquid. Sadly for them, they were just not able to get more than one kill from it. And that is the problem. Another nice part of the Maokai Poppy interaction, you can go right through the W of Poppy because you are untargetable when you're launching yourself forward with uh, the missing advance. So, pretty nice for him. 
Ultimately, it doesn't really mean anything because it's very unlikely to kill each other. The one that we saw earlier was an anomaly. But they take the Frank is down this to try and get this farm off. Oh, good hook onto a ruler. Matt will jump after the play. <laughs> Toss of the lance of the Piglet, who's like, nah, mate. Yeah, no, no. That's your fight. That's your fight. <laughs> I'm out of here. And and the problem for Liquid now is they can't like TP in and try and or gank. The, they can't even gank it. Because if they gank that lane, QV TPs down. And then they lose that trade as well. So because you don't have that global. You, you just have to surrender the bottom side. And the fact they're not getting dove and dying is, is a good thing for Liquid, but they really can't do anything to defend tower. So Samsung again effectively before traded a tower for, for the one kill. Obviously that's in favor of the team getting the tower, but it also oh, comes down to Samsung winning this bot lane 2v2. Liquid gambled with the Thresh pick, said, Matt, you've carried on this before. Can you do it again? Samsung's bot lane though, able to match whatever Matt had to bring and got that 2v2 kill. Piglet is trying now. He's trying for the solo kill. Matt's right behind him, trying to pick up the skill with him, but Roller still has his flash and his heal uh, and just burns the heal there. So yeah, Piglet burns a flash for a heal. Not the best optimal trade, you might say. But it's him trying to gamble and all in. Being like, I need a kill now. I need something. This Ezreal needs to get going. You're sitting there, you have your tier upgraded, but you still need one or two items to be a massive carry and Ambition. Oh no, not like this, dude. Ambition finds the first kill. This is a one versus three and he's already picked up one. And Core JJ is behind him. And Kuve is hammering Lolo in the top lane. Golden Glow on his way though, trying to see if he can get a kill for his team. There's a knockup, connects the Q, looking for front Miasma now, but Kuve will flash away. There's another Q landing, and there's the Miasma, but he's way too far behind his tower. And Ventral Maelstrom, don't want to deal with that right now. So, in the end, Samsung pick up a tower, a kill, a dragon, and maybe they'll lose a tower in the top lane, but maybe not. No, they will not, because Crown could just leave the mid lane and go up and actually stop that push from happening. Samsung getting everything on the map. Nice little combo bot lane from uh, Ambition. Fired his Q and, his, and then he safeguard at the same time. So he flew with it actually to the ward. So he was in melee range to then kick, obviously, a piglet to then follow with the second yeah. active on his Q to get the execute. And just like the maximum DPS combo you could possibly do where he even gets like an auto attack in between. We often skip over it, but that is like the bread and butter of an execute combo. So we just kind of expect everyone knows like the, the combos of Lee Sin by it, now. It's not often I see them actually safeguard to follow the Sonic Wave in. Yeah. That is something I don't see very often. There's Sadly, uh, it costs too much energy to also use the E to get that little extra DPS. Yeah. And that's simply not needed. It just deals enough damage combos. anyway. Yeah. There's the, the ult kick into Q follow-up, and then you follow up to so create that distance, knock them into your allies. Top lane, we keep going up here to this year when both tanks are full HP. Yeah, we actually rather see this fight for vision down bottom side. At least I want to see the fight for Me vision too. because all I care about is the wards on the map. Certainly it, more interesting than the tank fight. I'm expecting to get a ward in a Christmas gift as well. That nice. could be nice. Oh, I yeah. want to have that. You know, hang on my wall That's somewhere. Fantastic. Oh, Back with the place. Turning up. Rain over. He needs to knock up now onto vision with the balls on top. He'll jump back into the fight. Matt's down for the count. Piglet is all by his lonesome. And he'll also fall to ambition and crown with the kill credit. Ruler following underneath this tower and call JJ with the leash. Rainover is going to get snared up and Ruler has the damage to deal to Rainover for the third kill of the fight. Golden Goo a little late to the party. There's no punch left, but there is kills for Samsung. Samsung in full control. Very again, classic Western team versus Korean team. Best of series here where the first game is close. It looks like it gives the fans know, hope. It gives the false hope. It looks like the first team can actually do it. And then the second game, things just start falling apart very early because Samsung right now again have superior late game team fighting. And at the same time, they're now winning the early game. They're winning every single skirmish as well. There's three kills they just picked up right here. They have two towers to zero. 6,000 gold lead 18 minutes in. It is looking so difficult for Team Liquid, but honestly, People can't be too surprised. We talked about this in the last game, Pulse. It, it's a completely new roster yeah. from Team Liquid, where new members were added in, of course, Golden Blue, in Rainover. Yes, Piglet was with the team before, but then he was off the team a little bit. So I, I, I call it a completely new roster here. Samsung, the same team stayed together, went to the World Final. So I think more what you should look at as a Team Liquid fan is how well is Lolo, Golden Blue, and Matt performing? Because they're the players where there are some question marks. Like, everyone knows Rainer and Piglet will be fantastic players in the NALCS. Ambition uh, 
playing with his food at this point, <laughs> but again, perfect view, beautiful to see. Golden Blue might pick up the kill on the bot lane to roll of them. He's only able to block one of the twin fangs, so nice play by Golden Blue for that going for him. Obviously, he had some good uh, early plays in the last game as well. Struggled a little bit in the late game team fights, but it is hard to play Cassiopeia in late game fights versus all these big tanks diving you. He had some good catches, good synergy with Rainover, and a good kill bot lane. Map goes down. Oh man, super dead. And doesn't even get the death sentence off before he dies. Golden Blue once again involved in this fight. Only he doesn't because Kube is launching himself on him right now. Brown maybe falling to Lolo. Shielding himself both with the command protect. Ambition in hot pursuit. He's using the blast cones to get in range. Heroic charge would be enough to finish him off. And Ambition also with this fight. He's got the assistance of poor JJ and Kube. But that poppy is very tanky. Will take quite some time to finish him off. Golden Blue with the support as well. Probably signals the retreat of Samsung. Kube is hiding in the picture bush. The scary Maokai gang. He's actually still gonna go for this one. He refused to let it go. Come on, Kube, let it go. Just let it go. Go build a snowman or something. Ambition over the wall. Lands to kill on Gold Blue. He jumps in. Cool JJ doesn't really want the fight though. Roller flash Big over place. the wall. Oh, first kill. Looking for the second. Boomerang will chase him down. He's ticking out for the red buff. That will be the second kill. The double. The triple. Looking for another on time. Matt who wanders up to the fight and doesn't want to be here right now. A third kill to Ruler, a fourth one to Samsung. Rainover trying to get out, but there's a Maokai on top of you and there's no getting away from that. A 5-4-1, Samsung come up massive. Another huge team fight, honestly, Paul. There's really not a whole lot we can say now because Samsung is just winning every single fight. We see there, they've been winning the lanes, they've been winning the skirmishes. Huge goal advantage, only 20 minutes in. Looked like Cube uh, just wanted to take down Lolo, but in fact he was actually just buying time. He was waiting for the rest of the team to join. Golden Blue goes down now that Ambition had his ulti again. Ruler joins, and at this point here, there's nothing Liquid can really do to win the fight. Ruler flashing over the wall. You Ruler get an auto-attack. You get an auto-attack. Yeah. Matt, you get an auto-attack. Rain of, oh, hello. Welcome to the party. You get an auto-attack too. The worst feeling in the game is when the start of the fight is you dying. You then respawn and try and re-enter the fight and you die again. Yep. You're like, all right, never Feels mind. Good, man. Not my game. Uh, Matt roaming the jungles, looking for a pick. In his, his own jungle. jungle. One. <laughs> yeah. Roaming his own jungle. But you can see Matt in his natural habitat. That right. Crown popping of the enemy. Crooks. Naturally. Uh, Piglet not having a great game. 0-5 and 2. Probably feeling quite bad about his life currently. What Freak has to say about that one? Uh, <laughs> probably not a whole lot because there is, it, it is again, it is hard to ex expect much of Liquid in, in a game like this against Samsung. Uh, I think the first game was, was great, but what? Oh. Rain over. <laughs> Turning up. Nice. Yeah, you can't take a Cloud Drake from an NA team. Like that, <laughs> that would be so wrong. Ambition uh, honors Drake. the dead Cloud Drake by putting down a ward. You better be writing these down, Freak. More things for you to talk about on the other set. <laughs> Double cloud now. What's the next? The That's next one so Cloud Drake fast. as well, Sifu. That's so it's gonna be tri fast. Triple Cloud Drake. Can the run NA fast dream going to the American pie. Core JJ uh, is doing pretty well in this game. Uh, I really it's like to play Karma right now because you actually feel really powerful in fights. Yeah. Uh, not because of Karma herself, but because Riot was so kind to add redemption to the game. Uh, I have ranted a little bit on Twitter about this of like. Why does it have to both heal and deal damage? It is really one of the it's bigger questions. Damage. It is 10% max HP true damage, and it's already, just with the heal, like insanely strong, because the late game is at like a 500 heal. It's pretty crazy. Um, but yeah, it makes you feel very powerful as support. It feels great to use. Baron pickup, Sombrero. Oh, Kube gets knocked out. Good job by Lolo. Unfortunately, there's no team there, and they're very far behind. Golden Blue does not land a petrifying gaze onto any key target. And as a result, Samsung will get the Baron for pretty much nothing. Yeah, it's just so far ahead, Liquid. Hoping for that miracle uh, team fight, but it just. It won't but they're happen. up against a team fighting composition who are very yeah. far ahead. It is Christmas Pulse, but <laughs> miracles will not happen in this game. Samsung are looking to just push all the way into the base. Santa Claus QV. Going to deliver more presents. Yeah, yeah, but now he's Santa Claus. Uh, there's no. Well, there's actually Santa Maokai yeah, skin. Is, yeah. yeah, come on. Christmas tree. He's gonna jump into Lolo. Lolo will take the lantern back to Matt. Do a bit of a shimmy back to his team. 
Samsung just going to be poking this one away. If they really want to take, they could just defend that cannon minion all day and wait for it to take it down. But Kuve wants blood, just about blood in the water. Angry tree. Uh, he's actually going a bit too deep now. He may die for his sins as a tree. You say that, but he's kind of walking out of this one. Yeah, never mind. Ambition just killing Rain over up to the side. Pretty standard. Kuve and Crown and Ruler all chasing after. That's a karma killing your support. It's actually just one-on-one -on -one death match at this point. Jungler kills Jungler, support kills support. And Kuve is still alive. He's there just punching is things. no minions. Because Sat Magic is a thing and everyone's launching spells. And oh, Piglin, that damage was disgusting. Ambition uh, also makes it out. He picks up the kill onto Poppy. And Gonglu, he'll go back to base, but Ruler's there to kill him. And that was a very uninspiring team fight, but Samsung completely wiped the floor with Team Liquid. And in 24 minutes, we'll pick up the game and the series. 2-0 to Samsung, and they progress to the finals at IEM. Yeah, honestly, uh, what a different game. I thought uh, when we watched game one, I'm like, but uh, great, Fischio, we might have a series Fischio. here. This I is know, how every it. Western team versus the Korean team goes. Yeah. Second game, you have to pull something out of the bag, and if that something doesn't work, yeah, this game happens. It's so hard to replicate everything you did correct in the first game yeah. and do it in the second game. They also adapt to some of the things you were doing. Uh, Samsung obviously, two days ago, started pulling in the first game, still managed to win it, then just stomped the mortals in the next two games. So, Samsung definitely looking like a very, very strong team. Funny enough, what a great statement right there. Thank you, Sherlock Holmes. <laughs>